What's up guys, this is your boy Jody Dean and welcome back to another podcast, episode number two. Today we are talking to YouTuber Exploring with Fighters. This guy's been all over the world. He's probably been inside the world. Make sure you smash that thumbs up, leave comments below, share this on social media, and don't hesitate to grab this new piece of merch right here. Let's get into the pod. Dan, you're like one of the coolest dudes, bro. I've watched a lot of your videos. I feel like you're the kind of guy that goes into an abandoned place. And I can just see you turning off the camera saying, yo, call the homies. We're about to have a fucking barbecue in this drug dealer's mansion in the middle of nowhere. Bro. Is that about, is that about right? Uh, that wouldn't be the first time. That's for sure. I feel like you're the kind of dude that would just play catch with the bunny or some shit. Like, you're that guy at the party, bro, that just say, yo, let's throw the bunny around. Yeah, I've got a couple bunnies, and uh, they get thrown around quite a lot. See, I, I, I knew it, man. I had a feeling like, you, you know, at this point right now, I'm thinking about just moving over to the UK, just let the kids, the wife in for themselves. I'm, I'm just going to come over there, bro, and just be your new best friend, Dan. Bro, bring them all. Bring everyone along. I've got room. Oh, shit. Look at that. I can even bring the kids. I was just re ready to throw my career away for, for Dan from Exploring with Fighters. Bro, we can, we can be in a different underground mine every night. You're talking my language, bro. I've seen some of the places you go, and I'm not even sure that they're in this world. Sometimes I, I even say to Alicia, I say, I feel like Dan's on another planet or some shit. Because you literally go to some of the scariest, sketchiest places that I didn't even know exist. You know, I, I, I started a mission where I wanted to find the scariest place that I'm going to get out. And I'm going to think, how the hell did I walk away with my life? I still haven't found it, but I found some places pretty close. I know you have. I seen a picture where you were just sitting on some human bones, some human remains in this and this little catacomb looking thing, and I said, That dude is a gangster. That was a story. <laughs> that was an interesting night. That was the Paris Catacomb. I wanna hear about that. I want you to tell me about that, but but first up, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is how we do. We just get on into it. I'm Jody Dean, Mr. Hunting the Dead. Welcome to podcast number two, HTD Podcast, new podcast we just rolled out. Uh, we got a very special guest today. And when I say he's special, I, I truly mean that because I've been following this guy for a long time. I don't even think he knows that. But he, I don't. he's definitely one of my favorite. Dan, you have no idea. I have... I might end up getting your, your, your face tattooed somewhere at some point. Um... But but I really like this guy because he puts a lot of heart. He puts out quality work first off. Uh, he's what the internet's missing. I don't put out quality work like that. I know how to do it. It just takes so much work. But he commits to it. He does it. He goes to some of the uh, craziest places like I already mentioned. And I'm not even sure if he's human. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dan exploring with fighters. What's up, my guy? Blushing over here, bro. You're making me blush. I haven't had an introduction like that in a long time, if ever. Well, well you deserve it, man. You've uh, you've been putting in work for a long time. And before we dive into these catacombs, because you literally had to dive into those fuckers. Um, tell me, man, how did you even start doing YouTube? How did that come about? Well, that's, that's a good question. I get asked a lot, and I've never really answered it in depth. Short story. I had an abandoned house uh, in my town, basically on the end of the street. And, and as kids, you're like, it's a haunted house. And we always got close to it, but never got inside it. And as I started getting a bit older, I started wanting to venture into these haunted houses and old abandoned structures. And I took the leap uh, the first time inside an asylum. It was the biggest asylum in my county. And um, it was like a drug. I got out and I was like, holy crap, I need that. I need that every week and I did this for wow I mean I filmed my first video on a on a tape camera a camera that you put a tape inside wow. in 2005 um, with no intention of ever putting out just we just did it because why not we had a camera well it wasn't mine I stole it from my dad and yeah it just it evolved from there I was going to these places and that's funny enough I hate saying this because I, I know he I know he loves hearing it but I saw Exploring with Josh on TV, right? So I'm watching I'm watching this guy, Josh, on YouTube. I'm like, I do the same thing as this guy. Why am I not filming it? So I, I bought a camera. I went out and the rest is history. Wow. Wow. And, and, and what's crazy about that is I know that you 
and exploring with Josh, you guys are fr you guys are pretty close, right? I mean, at this point, like my family's adopted him. He has his own room in my house. Um, wow. Yeah, we're like brothers uh, on the phone every day. That that's awesome, man. And, and you know what's funny about that is, uh, and, and this ain't about me, so I won't jump into it. But my boy Omar, I I, uh, I was doing the ghost thing, but I wasn't doing it on on YouTube. And uh, we met, uh, or I was watching him on the internet, and uh, I started. I met this dude before I was on YouTube, but I was doing what he was doing, and it was weird. Uh, but we ended up becoming friends, and now we're close. So I have a similar story. Uh, but that's crazy. When you were saying in the beginning of that, that you you seen this place, man, and it looked like something you just didn't want to go into. It just reminded me of one of my exes for a second there. You know what I'm saying? Something you really didn't want to get into. <laughs> um, but but that's crazy, man. So you you started recording on a tape camera. Yeah, yeah. And I've still got the tape now. In fact, I, I put a flashback in, in one of my recent videos just saying, you know, a lot of people think I, I, I did this for YouTube. No, this has been a passion of mine since 2000. And I mean, 2002, if we're going back right the way when I was in high school. Um, going around to spooky places with the camera, with the Polaroid camera as well. So it's like really OG equipment. Some of the places you've been to, man, you almost give me a heart attack as a watcher. Um, for about two years now, man, I pop in and I see what the hell you're doing sometimes, and and, and I've I've tried to I've tried to keep a little quiet, man, because I don't want to seem seem like a little fangirl bitch, but I'm a little fangirl bitch, bro. There's been a few times that you've done some shit that I'm sitting there and I'm just like, no, Dan, don't fucking do it. Um, how how much danger have have you? Do you feel like you've put yourself into doing what you do? I mean, if I was a cat, I uh, I would have run out of lies by now. There's a, there's a saying and there's a. Uh, I mean, I know we're going to bounce over to the catacombs stories, but there's a throne in the catacombs, and they say if you sit on this throne, the angel of death will avoid you for four years. Now, I first ever sat on that throne in 2019, and that's when I started doing the underground mines and some of the really dangerous stuff, and I truly think that something is avoiding me, because I should have died numerous times in some of these places. Uh, I mean, I took Josh. And Josh looked at some of the places I, t I took him into, and we didn't even film it because he was like, damn, we, we are not walking out of here alive if we go up this ladder. And I'm like, don't worry, boys, it's fine. Trust me, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. And they even backed out. So it's, um, I think uh, in, in terms of danger, it's, it's, it's always dangerous. And that's the thrill of it. That's the excitement. That's the adrenaline. That's the drug that keeps me going. It's that fix of knowing that I could have died. Uh, it's kind of like a drug. Yeah, it's, it's scary. That That's so crazy, man. We have something else in common there. You've seen a chair and you hear this about it, man. It's like the angel of death and you're like, well, hey, I'm going to go sit on that motherfucker. I'm like that too. I'll treat that sh shit like a lazy boy, bro. <laughs> Get on that chair and kick my feet up. Bring it on, demon. Bro, I believed it that much. I, I, I went in 2019 and I was coming close to that four-year mark. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip a year ahead. I went back in 2022 and sat on it again. Wow! So you, man, he's just coming back to revisit the demon chair. Yeah. Revisiting the the angel of death. That's a that's a title for a video right there. <laughs> Should be writing these down. Out of all these places that you've been to, man, uh, God has been like I said for just the past two years, man. I, I I've been watching pretty hard. Uh, what's one? that you're afraid to go back to? Is it that one? Um, no. Uh, I think... I don't, I don't actually have one that I'm afraid to go back to. Yeah. Is there... That's a strange question. Is there question. one... It, it, it is, because uh, I'm kind of like you in the sense, man. Like, I like looking danger in the fucking face and saying, bring it on. It's just going to make a good video. If I die making this content, it is what it is. Let's go viral. But at the end of the day, there's some places that I just don't want to walk through the tall ass grass to get to. Yeah, you know, funny enough. So uh, my biggest fear in life is flying on a plane. Uh, that's my worst fear is, is planes. 
Um, I also, wow. I'm afraid of spiders, as funny as it sounds, but when I was in Japan, me and Josh had spiders that were chasing us, like huntsman spiders and wolf spiders. So when I came back to the UK, like the, the con comparison I can make, do you remember the, the movie uh, 28 Days Later? With the zombies, one of my one of my favorites, bro. Bro, right. So they're Japanese zombies, right? UK, you sorry, they're Japanese spiders. They're like the, the zombies, are right? But the UK spiders are like Shaun of the Dead zombies. You know, like really stupid, docile ones that don't really bother you. So the the UK spiders, I'm not too bothered about now. But my my biggest fear would be being on a plane with a spider. That's like the ultimate fear. Bro, I I feel like we came out of the same nut sack. It's crazy. So how are the snakes over there? Snakes? We don't. We, we have black adders. We have a few. We have a few snakes. But you know, what? I think I've only seen like two snakes in my entire life in the wild in the UK. Wow. Well, that that's good to hear because I we've been wanting to come over there for a while. And things that scare me about traveling anywhere, I'm I'm like you, bro. That's why I say the same nutsack. Uh, it, it, spiders, snakes, and planes. That's that's my thing. That's what I don't do. Other than that. Uh, kick the tires, light the fires, you know, I'm, I'm all in. But uh, you, you guys, you guys are so much better than us, bro. You guys got places that just look like they're on steroids over there. How did you get so blessed as an urban explorer over there, man? Like, you, you got, do you have endless content there? You know what, that's, that's, a funny, that's a funny thing. A lot of people think that the UK has this map of the best abandoned in the world is is far from the truth actually so we uh um, really? yeah we, we we have the architecture we have the history but we also have the vandals and when when places do become abandoned they are very quick to become uh demolished or vandalized mm. to be honest a lot of the the best abandoned i've seen in the world is france now france has the chateaus it has the the architecture it has rural places where no one travels to to destroy them and um yeah i mean in, in terms of like haunted history the uk endless supply you know we have endless supplies of legends monsters goblins ghouls phantoms you know it's, it's all there but abandoned not so much anymore we do have it now and again but so besides demons in these uh satanic chairs in the middle of of nowhere you know 666 feet below us uh do you ever run into people man that are scary do you you know these vandals you know that that's um that's probably the bigger fear of them all is is uh run into people i've run into a few vandals but the catacombs there's people that live under there called the cataphiles and we had a run in with them once that was a scary situation. That sounds scary, bro. I, I just, yeah, I just, the hairs just stood on my arms when you say that. There's people living underground there. Yeah, so these guys are playing real life Minecraft every day, 24 7, all day, every day, right? And they're bashing through new walls, making new corridors, and they treat this place like it's their temple, right? And they cannot stand YouTubers or anyone taking photos, being down there that shouldn't be down there. And yeah, they, they'll run you out with tear gas, smoke grenades. Um, we were very lucky the first time we went, we were in a group of like nine of us and we encountered the cataphiles. Now they grabbed one of the cameras off, off one of our crew members and they're like screaming and shouting. Next me, we're walking to this room. Bear in mind, we're underground. We're walking down a corridor. There's skeletons everywhere. We walk into this massive room. There's a, a chandelier hanging. There's about 30 people all stood there completely silent like this watching us and i'm like oh man i'm gonna get buried down here with the rest of these skeletons but somehow we made it out and that's the scary thing about that place it's not the skeletons what? it's the people so it's a good re it's a good reason to go down there with the homeboy or yep. some ho some some friends you're, you're not going into these places if you went in there alone it could be a whole different story oh right? you're dead 100 percent. if they don't kill you you're being lost will that that's that's what scared me about the catacombs. I was watching, you know, I was watching your stuff. I, I've watched some other stuff. Is It seems like getting lost down there would be so damn easy. How do you avoid something like that? You got to go in with somebody that knows the way or, or do you do, you got a special technique? Yeah, so I, I wouldn't, I wanted to go down there without a guide, with a crew of us and kind of map it out ourselves. But the rest of us were like, no way. Josh was like, no chance. 
uh, we've been down there with guides, but even the guides get lost, like even in my video, we're walking down a corridor for half an hour and we get to a newly bricked up wall because there's there's a, a special task force from the police called the Cata Police and they're even down there bricking up new, so it's, it's constantly changing and in fact only a few years ago they found someone down there who'd been missing for 40 years, he was the key master from near the library and the only reason they could identify him is from his wallet and he was still holding the master set of keys from getting in there he just wandered in there a little, bit, little, little bit too far and got lost and they only found him 40 years later yeah see we don't hear about no shit like that over here in, in, in the exploring community that's that's next level that's crazy bro yes yeah, scary that's what i said that's why i said the 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 exploring the the urbex over there is on steroids you, you went into some places bro like i said it, it takes a lot to to scare me i'm pretty much down for anything but you've went in some places before that i was like i don't know if i would do that or not i don't you know there was one where you were rowing a boat out oh. to this structure in, in, in the water and i was like what is dan doing he don't need to do this he could film anything else today what is my guy doing but you just you do some boss ass shit, bro. What happened with that? Uh, there's been a few like underground. See, we've got a, a big complex uh, tunnel systems and, and Victoria, especially Victorian tunnel systems, and a lot of them are flooded now. So you you've got to grab a boat and you've got to take a boat down. And actually, I I, I bought a, a life raft and we named it the Kraken. And this this Kraken boat is is taking us to some crazy places. I mean, I've been down the longest underground tunnel in Britain in this inflatable tent-like structure. Um, and yeah, some of the rowing the rowing boats we've got to take down and, and little small dinghies because the roof is like two, like a metre high and you've got to try and get through these waterways. And it's, yeah, why not? Why, bro, why not? I don't want to sign no desk. I am so glad that you do it. I'm so glad that you do it. I'm so happy to be able to watch it. And, and that's, bro, that's why I wanted you to be interview number two on this podcast. Uh, I'm hoping a lot of people see this and a lot of people find out about you that might not know about you. Maybe a lot of you guys do. You guys can, can agree. Dan is on another level with this shit. And as I mentioned in, in the beginning, too, you care about quality, bro. Like, you don't see a lot of YouTubers going out of their way to... to 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 do that to put out that quality content what's that been about man i mean you came from the tape dude to 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 shooting these you know super high quality movies man um i mean i i, I edit them and i film them like I, i'd want to be watching them myself you know if I, when i finish editing a video if, and i rewatch it and if i'm not happy with it i'm not going to put that out I think quality is key i used to be always about quantity and putting out as many videos as i could and I soon learned that quantity definitely doesn't override quality. So I started putting more effort in and, and better camera equipment and more angles. And now I've got like six cameras rolling at once sometimes when I'm camping out. And I think it's, it just makes the viewer experience so much better. I agree with you, man. When I, when I watch your content, I feel like I'm watching a movie. And, uh, and, and that's sick. And, and it's crazy. Again, you know, I know how to do that stuff, man. And uh, there's been a few projects that I've put a little bit more into. But consistently, I've I've never, you know, I, I've never done it. Um, maybe I maybe I should. It's like when I watch Omar's content, my buddy Omar, man, he, he really puts that effort into his work as well. But there's only a few of you guys that are really going outside the box to do it. So I want you to know that that's appreciated. I appreciate that. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you an inside scoop, right? This is, this is going to really shock you. Um, so the phone that I'm actually recording on, I edit all my videos and always have done on my phone. What? Yep. Really? Yep. On your phone? On my phone. Everything. Bro, I was Okay, sat, now my mind's blown. I Stop it, Dan. On, Stop on it a, right a now. Bullet train in, in Tokyo, heading to the far north. Josh is sat there and he's like bored. I'm sat there, bro, on my phone. I'm editing video. I got two videos edited in eight hours on a bullet train. It's so convenient. I can get it all done. It's what I've been doing for like five, six years now on the phone. 
mind is fucking blown, bro. It just goes to show you don't always need all that crazy equipment, especially like editing softwares. It, it, it's true, man. Uh, you, you, you don't, you know, and, and that goes to prove it right there. I've always felt the less you have, the more creative you are. And uh, I love that gorilla style, bro. Like I, I wrote this movie and we've actually been filming it for the past uh, few months here where it's going really good, but... A lot of the a lot of the technique, man. I wanted to go straight gorilla style. I didn't want to have a DP and write each shot. I wanted to just get there and do whatever felt right. And and it's some of the best work I've ever put together so far. I like that. But I want to talk about something else, man, because I know for me and anybody else I've known on this platform. Uh, with being a YouTuber comes a little bit of fucking drama. People love the drama. Um. When you started taking off on YouTube, did did you get hit with the drama? Did you get hit with the haterizations? Is it is it still soupy out there with them? Yeah, so it, it wasn't. It didn't take long for that to happen. In fact, so it was uh, within my first eight months on YouTube. I I filmed um, David Floyd's, um, sorry, David Gilmore's Pink Floyd Mansion um, in the UK, and it blew up. Well, it's my first big video. It, it, it did like five hundred thousand views in the week. And that was like my first jump into the um, into the YouTube realm of, of like quick growth, and along came a lot of hate from the, from a website, and they take photos only. Now you guys don't have it nowhere near as bad. Even Josh says this: you guys don't have it bad. But in the UK, there's like a constant rivalry between photographers and videographers, and um, they absolutely hated the fact that I'd filmed and documented this place and that's where it all started uh, I mean now it's not too bad I mean you always get bits of drama here and there or people trying to make videos and you've got to have thick skin you know, you'll always wake up to hate comments but it, it doesn't bother me and to be honest I've never I've never bit back because I've always found YouTube to be a place of uh, reality escape you know I want people to come to my channel and forget about what's going on in day-to-day -day life forget about the troubles forget about money forget about what's going on in the world and just escape for all that for a bit and I don't want to I don't want people to come to my channel and be brought down by some drama or be brought into that negativity so I try and keep it very clean I, I love that about you bro I, I do and I noticed that and, and if there's one thing I've noticed and I love about you and and I think that a, a lot of people can see it um is, is you love your family. Oh yeah. And you oh, see yeah. you see you not only love your family but you just you seem like a good dude, you're good to your friends and you care about what you do. So I mean that says a lot, bro. I mean that's the kind of company uh we like to keep as 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 well. So that's awesome that that's able you're able to radiate that so well on your different platforms, man. You've done a good job with that. It'd be hard not to like you, bro. I mean, hating you would just be going out of the box for seriously something to do, which, uh, Alicia, I mean, that's what they do, right? They they do it all the time. I mean, yeah, it's true. They go out of the box, uh, they go out of the box to, to hate, but it's not just with like the people watching, man. Like sometimes there's this hate in the YouTube communities. Like you said, man, people, uh, oh, you filmed it and I didn't get to do it. You son of a, you know, it's it's really weird, bro. Yeah, I mean, going back to the family, like, I'm like, you and my family, man. I've got four kids. Like, I don't put them online because I don't want them brought into that. I don't want them to use as, uh, you know, ammunition for anything. But, yeah, I mean, I've got four kids. My, my parents are heavily involved with my YouTube channel. Like, they, they come on my live streams. Like, they're on tonight on my live stream. And they, they're, it, they're yeah. super proud. Like, they're so proud of everything I achieved because, you know, I, I didn't come from, um, you know, a particularly kosher background. Um, maybe that's something we can go into. I mean, I went into it on Elton and Corey's uh, YouTube channels. Um, you know, there was, I, I have a past, and I was able to get out of that past and leave it behind, and, yeah, it came to this. That's that's amazing, bro, going from zero to hero. Um, yeah, those past, man, they make us who we are, bro. It's, it's an amazing thing. When the YouTube stuff took off, um, everybody couldn't help but be proud of you, bro, because this ain't an easy thing to really take off with uh it's getting harder now because so many people are doing it but when that happened man how life-changing was that for you and your family unbelievably i was scraping before before youtube i was scraping between the sofa for you know coins to put electric on and before that like i was selling counterfeit goods to make ends meet because i was doing mma and i was training i was competing in the circuits um so like you know there's a lot going on and 
eventually like all people doing something wrong I got caught and I had no priors so it was like two years probation so I actually took a year out of my life and I'm sat there and I'm thinking what do I do with myself and that's when I saw Exploring with Josh's content and that's when I started making YouTube videos when it took off it was almost like a sigh of relief like I could just turn around to my family and be like I told you I'd make it work eventually like I knew where I was going I knew there was something waiting yeah. for me I just didn't know what it was and uh YouTube is what it was. When, when Josh has heard the story or when you guys talk about this, because I know his homeboys, man, you sit around and sometimes you just say, damn, bro, look at this. Look, can you believe we're doing this? What kind of stuff does he have to say about it, bro? Especially knowing that you watched him before. You know what? He doesn't say, he doesn't say much. He's, he's, a, he's kind of a funny guy like that. He doesn't talk much. He, he talks more about future context um, rather than past he will always mention if the videos are doing bad, you know, that's it, we're, we've got to pack it in, we're going to have to, you know, go back to normal life, you know, and um, and it's kind of more like non-stop banter. He's, he's hard to get a serious conversation out of his Josh. It's always banter. That That's awesome, man. I, I think we all came from the same nutsack now. <laughs> no, he's a good guy. I do want you to know this, man. If you ever come over here to the United States, uh, specifically in, in the Georgia area. I got a big mean mansion that's that's calling your name. Bro, bro you know, I commented on your shit, like, I think it's like nine months ago or something, I was like, one day, one day, I will come over and I'm going to film the shit of that place. Like, I've been dying to see it ever since I've seen it pop up on YouTube. I, I I want you to man, and uh, and you're gonna have it. You're gonna have it so good. You get in this neck of the woods, bro. Uh, I, I'll put you up. You'll be treated like a king, and, and and you'll have a lot of time. And I can point you in the direction of some other shit that just from knowing you, I know you're gonna want to stick your finger in the sugar bowl. So it, as far as the planes go, we we share that too. I I've warmed up to it. I, I've done it quite a bit, but it, it's still from the time I get on the plane till I get off, I'm a nervous wreck. Uh, there's even been a few times like I've collapsed as soon as I get off the plane. Uh, the longer I'm on one, the worse it is. I, I flew from Florida to Vegas, and when I got to Vla v Vegas, when I got to fucking Vegas, I want to go to Vegas. When I got to, <laughs> when I got to Vegas, uh, I, I hit the floor, bro. I look like a a limp ass fucking noodle. But uh, your plane ride from there to 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 over here is 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 a whole different ball game. I I don't know how long. I think it's like six hours um, to to Boston anyway. But I I took the I took the plane on my own to Japan. No, uh, it was a one way, and it was fourteen hours long. And when I when I was coming home, I flew out on the back end of a hurricane. Right, and I'll tell you this: I made a video saying basically saying you know thank you so much for all your support. Uh, unfortunately, I've passed away in a plane crash. Uh, please continue to support my, my uh, family by watching the videos. I put it on my YouTube channel, scheduled it for two days' time, so when I got on the flight, if it had crashed, it had released in two days' time. But luckily, I landed, and I had to delete it swiftly. But that's, that's how convinced I was I was going to die. You know what's crazy? Is Jody did the same thing. Like, he went to Texas. He didn't think he was going to make it back. He made a video on the plane because he thought he was going to die on the plane. Yeah, when he was just saying that, I was like, wow, I feel like we're two brains in one head or two balls in one sack, you know? <laughs> Bro, you have to, you have to come over to the UK. I'll tell you what, I can show you some things that will blow your mind. I know you could, bro, and, and I've even told Alicia before before I ever talked to you, before you probably ever knew, I didn't, I don't know if you ever knew I existed or not, I knew just, I had been following you for a while, and I was like, I gotta say something. I've been on Instagram man. for about two years, I think it's been. Oh, wow, okay, all right, so... Well, I've been following you for a hot minute, bro. And every time you post a picture, I'm like, there's this motherfucker again, bro. Going to the scariest fucking places in the world. I'm getting scared, man. I'm getting scared. But, bro, you you, you make it look so easy. Um, And it's not. It's a lot of hard work. I don't think a lot of people that watch ever think about that. They're just so engulfed in it. But when I watch your content, bro, I'm like, yo. This guy, he goes above and beyond. Um, 
if people wanted to find you on the internet, I know how, and I'm going to put all that information in the description below, but uh, tell people how they can find you on YouTube and all your social medias. Yes, yeah, it's, it's literally Exploring Fighters on, on the majority of my stuff. YouTube, Exploring Fighters, Instagram, Exploring Fighters, Facebook, Exploring Fighters. Uh, you can catch all my stuff on there, yeah. Uh, upload weekly. I'm trying to do two videos a week again, but it's it's kind of difficult because I've upped the production of the videos. I find it's, it's, it's hard because I still edit the videos myself. I don't have an editor. And um, finding the time, you know, to balance it with the family as well, it's... Uh, it can get a bit daunting, but yeah, you can catch me on all them socials. Exploring Fighters. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got Dan from Exploring with Fighters here. As he said, he has that handle pretty much all the way across the board. I definitely suggest you jump on YouTube and you follow this guy. Then you go to Instagram and Twitter and all those good places and follow him as well. I promise if you're looking for some scary, entertaining content, uh, this guy has it. And, and sometimes you encounter paranormal stuff when you're doing these but you don't necessarily consider yourself like a, a hardcore paranormalist really you know it's, that's actually funny because i never used to believe in the paranormal um i was always on the fence i'm very open-minded but i was always like we're not going to capture anything in here until i filmed at one place in my in my hometown i took josh there and he's like dude he's like i'm gonna do an american i'm gonna really butcher an american accent here but he's like dude why the hell have you never taken me to this place before and I was like, I was like, I, did, I butchered it, and, I, and he was like, that was good. I was like, I liked it. I was like, you know what? It's it's because it's in my local town. It's kind of that spot that's always there. It was an orphanage called Saint Joseph's, and shit popped off in there. Like the EVPs we were getting on the DR60 were just, it was just out of this world. And I actually didn't say it on YouTube because it upset me so much. But there was a segment on the EVP, and it was actually my grandma, and she, you could hear her clear as day, just saying, Daniel, like a very disappointed Daniel. And I had family ties here because my great auntie was a nun at this orphanage as well. So after that, after that situation, I was like, I was so then convinced in the paranormal. I went out, I spent ten thousand pounds on paranormal equipment, night vision cameras, full spectrum cameras, CCTV cameras. You know, I got all the best uh, music boxes and REM pods. And I was, and now, uh, now I would consider myself an explorer that also dabbles in the paranormal and trying to find the most legitimate evidence I can because for me, it brings peace of mind. If I can prove there's life after death, I've got more peace in dying, you know? I, I don't. The idea of dying and everything just being black and your memories fading into darkness is the scariest thing, um, the scariest thing I've ever, ever thought of, you know? It's terrifying. I agree with you, man. I, 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 I've felt that way ever since Alicia and I started doing this. We found the paranormal together, and um, that's how we've always felt is the best way we can respect the dead is is to let them know that we want to give them a voice. And, you know, that's the craziest thing that happened early on with YouTube was uh, people always feel like, oh, you're disrespecting the dead by trying to communicate with them. I think that forgetting about people is is disrespectful, man. You know, I might not know John from the haunted house up the block, but if I'm there trying to give him a voice... What could be more respectful than that? What could honor him more than that? No, I completely agree. I think that's um, that's one of the best things about it is when you're contacting these people. I, I mean, I'm still like, I don't know if I'm actually speaking to a, a person who was once living or if it's just residual energy inside the, the quartz crystal in the brick and it's just somehow replaying those memories and you're capturing it on audio. But I think showing those memories or those those voices or ghosts or whatever they are, showing them is uh, is the best thing that we can do as paranormal researchers. I agree with you, man. So you, you, you've already done this, but you plan on diving deeper in the paranormal yeah. stuff? Yes, yeah, so that's a 100% categoric, yes. Um, I don't plan on stopping. I'm working on new experiments with, you know, even down to Tesla coils and electricity charging points and seeing if um, there's a way that we can trigger some of these quartz crystals to replay memories if it is uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, you probably are, the stone tape theory, you know, where these like, crystal in the stone, because there's, so in the UK we've got York, it's a very famous, obviously you've got New York. In York, there was about a dozen Roman soldiers spotted walking through the city, city square, seen by numerous people, but they were waist deep in the floor, and that's where the original floor would have sat, you know, 2,000 years ago. And 
for me that screams a residual playback somehow somewhere this memory has been triggered and replayed like you're watching a video projection and these Roman soldiers are walking through. I don't necessarily believe they were they were ghosts, but I think it was a memory being replayed somehow. And I'm trying to trigger that. I love that, man. So you so you're inventive on top of this, man. You you really actually got a passion. You got a heart for the paranormal past. Just making some content, man. This is deep with you, bro. Like you care about this shit. Oh yeah, not none of the content I make is ever just just for a video. You know, I'm not I'm not one of them people who's like, oh, I need a video. I'm, I'm gonna go and film this just for this video. You know, it's like every My every guy. every bit of content I make is, and the reason why it's it's done well is because I'm so interested and and it's got such a passion for it, and I just genuinely love it, and I'm I'm so grateful that I'm able to have a lifestyle doing the things i love on youtube you know i count my lucky stars every day you know there's never a day that you'll see me ungrateful of this position i i never have man i i that's again that's radiated off of uh your platforms to me so um i definitely i salute you for that bro and i think that's that's so cool that you're trying to take this shit to another level and that you actually care about what you're putting out and um you're thankful you're grateful you're humble you're a family guy, and uh, yeah, man, we just got to get these people to stop pissing in the fucking pool, and yeah. you know, <laughs> and then everything will now. be okay. Yeah, That's the only issue. <laughs> if people stop peeing in the fucking pool, man, the world would be a better place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, we are going to go ahead and depart from Dan right now. Dan, thank you so much for joining us here uh episode number two on our podcast man i really appreciate it bro and thank you for everything you're doing out there on the platform uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here thank you so much for having me honestly i was so excited when i got the message off you i'm like yes i've never done anything like this before in my life so i was like first time you guys hell yeah fuck yeah our first time we were dan's first you took bro. my virginity on this one i'm proud of that i'm gonna tell everybody i took dan's fucking virginity <laughs> All right, guys, this is Mr. HTD right here. I hope you enjoyed this soupy-ass fucking interview with Dan, the man from another land who loves Japan. This guy is covered in love, bro. He is full of fucking love all the way down to the tips of his toes. He's a good lad, man. Definitely go follow him out there. Motherfucker's got clouds in the ceiling. You guys didn't get to see that, but when we first came on the pod, I was like, holy shit. All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll be back soon with another pod banger. But until next time, sweet nightmares. Just woke up and I hopped on this beat. When the song's over, I'ma fuck me a freak. Hop in the shower and I brush my teeth. Open up my phone and make this a tweet. Okay, bitch, you playing yourself. Hating on me, must hate yourself. Okay, bitch, you playing yourself.